What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of AD's RX for MD. It's your girl Alicia Nicole and I just want to thank you so much for joining me today. So today's video is about Anki and how I use it to maximize my retention and recall. I understand everyone out there might not be an Anki person. I think you definitely should be. But let's get into today's video. So the first thing that I would say is you have to come up with a song. And this is only if you are someone who is able to listen to music while studying. Now, I am able to listen to music, but it's under certain circumstances. I definitely can't listen to anything that has words in it. I recommend classical. I might be biased to classical, but I've been listening to the same song since undergrad. And my favorite study song is Yo-Yo Ma, The Swan. I like it because it's really mellow. It doesn't have a whole lot of really big dynamic changes want it to become like a drone in your mind but really creating that atmosphere and that environment where you're always learning when you hear that song is going to help you in the long run of course you don't want it to be really loud like you want to be able to hear yourself think or hear yourself speaking out loud if need be so that was my first two steps my third step is at least while you are learning material do so out loud I think something about hearing it out loud, like having to process it from the screen and then having to process it enough to repeat it back. I think there's definitely something about that that helps to make those connections faster. Also, repeat, like read the question out loud and then answer the question because it's really easy to make connections in your brain that aren't sustainable. For example, seeing a certain keyword might make you think of what the answer is, but you didn't actually think about what's the question, like what's the concept being tested here. Number four, um, while you are in the process of learning an Anki card, once you read the answer, try to repeat the answer or at least summarize it without looking at the Anki card. See just how much of that information you actually retained. And if it, you barely got anything, read it once again and then try to recite it out loud without looking at the card and then hit again. It's one that I am not great about, but even if there's the slightest bit of hesitation or uncertainty about what's on the other side of the Anki card, you need to do that card again. Um, don't hit good just because you were like, I think it's blah, 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 and you happen to be right. That means that concept is not yet solidified in your head. You don't know it for certain. Okay, so number six is gonna be pretty controversial, I think. Um, some people swear by putting like one little fact on each Anki card and they say like, I have to do it that way or I won't learn it. Personally, I make really big picture Anki cards and I'm talking like, I may put two, even three slides in one Anki card in the answer section. And you're probably thinking, oh my goodness, that's crazy. But I do it for several reasons. For one, seeing like six, 700 plus Anki cards just in my personal deck do a day, it does not motivate me at all. It, it makes me feel like I might as well not even start because I'm not gonna get through all of this. Also, when I do little microscopic details, I tend to lose the big picture of what I'm talking about and how those concepts are related to each other. Because even if you put those details on your Anki cards and you say like, oh, I wanna see new cards in order. Sure, the first time you see those cards, they'll be in order. But every time you see those cards afterwards, they're gonna be in a completely random order. You may see a card from one lecture and then the next card is from a completely different lecture and it has nothing to do with that concept. Also, um, Adding several, I'll say two to three slides in one Anki card dramatically decreases how long it takes you to make Anki cards. If you're finding that you're spending more time making Anki cards than you are studying them, that means you need to find a way to be more efficient. This whole method that I've been explaining is something that I got from the MD journey. Um, I watched a lot of his videos before I started med school just because I wanted to get a leg up. And so I don't want to take credit for that at all. That's definitely all him. Before I move on, I want to talk about how to study that way. So you really can't study those cards the way you would study a card that has one or two facts on it. It's just not gonna be possible. Question, you see the answer, learn one or two things, then do the thing where you repeat it out loud and you're like, okay, I got it. Um, the next time you see that card, see if you can recall those one or two things. If you can, now learn a third thing. If not, refresh yourself on those one or two things and move on. And I will just do that and keep hitting again until I've learned everything that's in that Anki card. When you're making your Anki cards, 
actually talk through the material that's on the slide. So I used to have a really bad habit of just trying to be as efficient as possible and I would just copy paste, copy paste, copy paste. And it got to a point where I realized like some of the questions that I was writing really weren't testing the material on the slide. I just saw like one keyword and I just wrote a question to that. And it's because I wasn't paying attention to what was there. Um, but a better way to go about it is if you're looking at a slide, say, okay, say the title, say, um, types of congenital heart defects and then say out loud what they are, you know, ASD, VSD, whatever they are and do that as you're making that Anki card because again, you're verbalizing some of the material that you're trying to learn and I guarantee you once you're done making those Anki cards, when it comes time to actually review them, you will have picked up something at least. All right, so number seven would be to use image occlusion sparingly and carefully. It is so tempting to just go in and occlude all the slides and just basically make a fill in a blank slide. And I did that very, very early on and I quickly learned that it wasn't actually helping me learn anything because I was just learning patterns. I would see a familiar card and I just knew what words were behind those blocks and I would just say those words and I wasn't learning the material at all. I pretty much only use it for like anatomy when it's like, what is this bone? And also like if you're trying to learn certain lab values, it can be useful for that because again, that's something that's very concrete and definitive. Number eight would be not to get caught up in all of the features and add-ons in Anki. Of course, they're really cool and they make it a really good user experience. But if you're new to Anki and you're just trying to get started, all of that can like deter you from using it and make you feel like this app is just super complicated. You can use Anki effectively with just the basic card types, the front and back, the clothes, the image occlusion. Um, for the most part, those are the card types I use now, even though there's still so many different types. Right, so number nine would be to ask the same or similar questions in different ways. Again, this is about keeping you from simply recognizing a pattern. And when I say a pattern, like it's good to recognize certain patterns for like standardized exams. When I say a pattern, I mean, like you see a set of words in a specific order and you just automatically know this is what comes next, but you didn't actually learn that concept. And so that's why I like to ask questions in different ways. And my last tip is to make sure that you are using pre-made Anki decks. This definitely helps save a lot of time and also helps point you towards more of the high yield concepts. Um, there are some great ones out there. One that's more comprehensive would be the Anking deck. It pretty much has all of the other sub decks embedded within it. I personally don't use it because with Onking, it's kind of all just embedded in one deck and it's organized by tags, which is slightly different from what I personally prefer. Um, and I think it's a little bit more con complicated to use. Honestly, all the other decks that Onking is made out of are still available. So for example, if you use Boards and Beyond, Lightyear is a great deck to use. Also the Sketchy Pepper decks, which is going to include Sketchy Micro and Farm material. Um, I really, really love those decks. The reason why you wanna do this is because these step decks really help keep you relevant on the high yield material. So that is it. That brings me to the end of this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.